This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, we were talking about arrays in the last class and uh, so we need to continue from there. Okay. Hope you know, right? Uh, I hope everybody is clear with uh, what is an array. Why do we need arrays? All that basic introduction uh, you remember, right? And how to create one one dimensional array and uh, how to iterate it and how to find, uh, you know, how to extract it, how to initialize it. Different types of initialization. We had discussed yesterday, we have four different types. But we can add few more by changing few things. The basic types are four types that we have discussed yesterday. After that, we had discussed like, you know, how to work with a couple of types. And then, then that's what we are doing there. Right? Now, today I would like to do some, some few examples on this arrays and uh, we would do some you know, analysis and it is. And uh, what is that is uh, one thing we have to learn more in the, in the arrays topic is, uh, yeah, we have done till this yesterday. This is what we have done. Okay. So, and you know, right, we can work with uh, different things with arrays. We can pass an array as a parameter to a method that is also there. Got it right? We can pass array as parameter to a method that is there. Also, what is that? Uh, we can create array of objects. So I will focus on the most uh, happening scenarios, sir. One of the most happening scenarios. Is it audible to everyone, sir? Hello. Can you, can you hear me, sir? Am I audible? Okay, then that, then Suresh, I think you have some issue. Okay, so yeah, fine, no problem. Please re, re log in now. Now, what we do today is uh, we work on few scenarios uh, which were really useful on dealing with 1D arrays. We have discussed this scenario yesterday, like you know, iterating uh, an array using a loop. Even we can pass arrays to methods. We can see that one scenario. Okay, so what we do is. Uh, other important things is there are so many things to handle this arrays. Uh, there are so many logics as well. Okay. But what we do now is uh, after that yesterday with what we have done, some of uh, first you know array of elements. This is what we have done yesterday. Next one is the next topic I would like to discuss with you is. Uh, this is something useful to you, really useful array of objects. Okay, now you know how to create an array, right? You know how to create an array. And you know, like you know, the fundamental thing about array right? That now, after understanding that, you know, how to find some or uh, how to do all that stuff. So what we discussed today is array of objects. What do you mean by this array of objects and uh, how to create array of objects? This is something really a useful scenario for everyone. We will discuss that. Now, let us take one example now. Instead of talking too much theory, what we do is uh, we'll, we'll get, we'll uh, straight away jump to the example because most of the stuff, you know, only stuff, the thing is how to create array of objects that you need to understand. And in that, if you want, you can try some, uh, you know, you can try some 
use cases if, if you wish uh, we can try some use cases on that okay I'm just starting Eclipse. Uh, give me a minute. So we do one thing. Uh, we take one employee example and we create array of employees. Uh, suppose you know it. When you talk about employee, you can keep this as is. You don't need to change anything here. Okay. So you can work on so many. So many you you know algorithms on arrays as well like array searching array sorting okay searching of arrays sorting of array okay, and, the, and also you can also try like you know linear search find research okay, and sorting if you want if you are really interested in algorithms suppose if you are interested to understand algorithms like linear search sorry by uh, bubble sort or uh, pick sort or uh, cell sort there are so many sorts like you know selection sort and uh, the, you can also try those sorts if you are interested now i'm just creating an employee example here just to give you an idea of uh, array of objects means you know creating an integer array double array float array uh, that is fine and we try to insert all integers or all, all decimals or uh, all strings something like that but you know when you build this class now you know how to create one object two object three objects suppose i have an employee i'm just making a very simple example here okay in this i'm just declaring two fields here are instance variables uh, something like where some uh, employee name colon something like uh, string equal to usually we set it to null uh, we set uh, these instance variables to default values in, in scala and then where some uh, employee number, employee name, and then uh, EMP ID, employee ID. You can make it as string if you want, or you can make it as integer. Usually, that's up to you. Whether it is int or a string is up to you. And then where some uh, employee cell, EMP cell, okay, colon uh, some dot we take set. Let me it as double, okay. A double R float, I think is fine, sir. And set it to 0, 0.0. So that's it. These are instance variables. And set data, DF, uh, what do you do? Set EMP. Okay. And then uh, usually we can use constructor to do this directly. A parameterized constructor is the best fit. But for now, just to make it simple, I am just taking it no default constructor no parameters i am declaring instance variables in the class and i'm initializing this parameters through method okay so here this method can be like this employee we, we take three parameters here so one is a uh, ename colon string second one emp id uh, emp id colon int the third one what is that sir uh, emp cell colon uh, double sorry and then return type as it is a setter you know just make it as unit because setter type of methods don't return values now let's initialize these values this dot ename equal to ename that is one thing this will work if it is a method but this don't work if it is a constructor this dot emp id equal to emp id this dot emp sal equal to emp sal
so that is fine for us next after that another method get data so just for uh, you know this thing the instead of set emp get emp it's a default method even i am just making it as unit we are not returning data this time we are just printing the data until now for okay name colon uh, name name plus name okay we are concatenating this uh, e name of course similarly print the remaining the two attributes employee id so here also what is that emp id and then this one employee cell here also emp cell so this is my class uh, folks you get this this is my class suppose i want to create uh, three employee objects how do we create it we generally we do like this so you got it right what did we do in this program we declared an employee class with three instance variables we used one instance method to set this data and we use one instance method to get the data now suppose i want three employee details for one class we can create any number of objects For one class, we can create any number of objects. And each object holds one employee information. If you create 10 objects, it holds 10 employee information. You can assume this class as a table in database. If you have idea about database, sir. you can assume class as a database. When you create object, it is an entry of that, uh, what is that, entry of uh, each row in the database every object is one entry every object is one row in a database if you create if you create 10 objects means it is equal to 10 rows in a database usually in a database you know right every row has different data usually we don't have unique data of course at this stage it's our it's up to us like how to keep the data but i'm just giving you a quick idea so now the purpose of objects many people don't don't understand actually they don't have they have a big question what is this all it's a very simple thing sir in programming object is nothing but it is an entity or it's a memory which holds data object holds data sir object has data inside and that data we get it also you get my point so now what I'm doing is I'm creating multiple objects for this now, something like a new employee. Okay, and then I am setting data for this. Set EMP. E, E1.set EMP. This is how we have to do it. Something like first one, something like Manohar, then name, then employee ID, one, two, three, four. Then this is an integer, right? And then salary some thousand rupees. This is the employee one details. Similarly, if you want, you can print it here itself. Okay. Right. Suppose I want employee two, then I can create one more object for the same class. This is employee two, sir. Now I can set a different data to this. Okay something like uh, manohar one and then uh, one two four five some i'm just quickly going after this that's all suppose i want one more object one more employee details then i should create one more object <coughs> excuse me you say e3 and you might pass some other data here employee manohar two something like uh, one 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 something like that sir just an idea suppose i want 100 employee objects then creating independent objects like this this becomes a very difficult process that is where we create array of objects we have seen array of integers 
we know how to create array of decimals or double double values we know how to create arrays for value types but what i see you know what i observe is generally people have problem when they come to this kind of scenarios because usually in learning in youtube channels or you know in the websites or you know in most of the training programs what happens is people mostly go with the, this value type arrays i don't i'm not saying that uh, they don't teach most of the time what i'm saying and these things get skip it there but actually you know you need to get an idea of, of, about this kind of things sir because they they works very well in your project now you know you should know how to create array of objects and that is not difficult many people don't know how to create array of objects means suppose i want 100 employee objects instead of creating independent objects like like this if you go for are creating array of objects that becomes your job much more easier okay what how can i do that then so this is fine now i have created three objects i have set data for all the three objects now i can get data simply i can say e1 dot get emp this will get employee one data again e2 dot get emp again e3 dot get emp what happens now now i get three employee details here if you see i get all the three employee details can you see this sir uh, the others were null one minute why because i should call e2 here that's the mistake i didn't call setter set sir if i don't call set methods then the data is not updated in the objects this time you get perfect data. Can you see this? Sir? Now, how to rewrite this program for array of objects? Suppose I need 100 employee objects. How can I do that? Instead of this, no, you got this right, sir. All of you get this right. Now, I'm removing all this, sir. And first, what I'm doing is I'm not creating the objects independently, but I am creating array of objects. When you create array of objects, what is that first you have to do is you have to say new employee and then inside this, you need a bracket here, sir. Uh, one minute. So what is that new? You have to use the array class, right? What is that you should use here? New array of the type. The type has to be what, sir? The type has to be employee here, not integer. Then, parenthesis. And how many objects do you want, sir? Five objects, right? And also, you don't need a probably for array, we don't need new operator, right? Do you think new is necessary? One minute. I don't exactly remember that. This one, we are following this style, this area of size. Okay, we need new here, sorry. We don't new for, we don't need new for this one. If you pass parameter, so new is necessary. This is actually not uh, that object type creation. It is more like, uh, no? Type data type, like you know, this is type type 3 or type 2 type. So, new is recommended here. When we don't need new, is uh, when you directly pass parameters, this uh, you know, elements to the array itself. Here, we don't need new here because behind this, we have companion, but behind this, we don't have companion. So, new is necessary. So, what did I do now here, sir? If you look at it, uh, I created array of uh, employees. This is an employee array. Now, what happens? Do you think all we in this array do you have five employees? Do you have five objects inside this? No. This is my question. So this is how you create employee array or array of employees. A question is 
do you have that five employee objects in this array? That's my question. Do you have five employee objects? Yes, sir. No. You can just give me some yes, sir. No, sir. I don't want uh, no. So no problem. Just tell me yes, sir. This statement here. We have created five buckets of information, but uh, in fact, is not required. So yeah, question is, uh, do we have employee objects here, or just we created five employee? References, array of references do you have now so far or objects are there? Many people has a question here. We didn't create objects, sir. Keep in mind that still we didn't create objects. We have to assign objects to each location. Now what we have done is we have created array of references. It looks like this. Have, have an idea, have a detailed idea. What did we do here is here and we say that employee E1, this is E1. Okay. This has some address assume that 100. And this is pointing to this. Now this has five locations. And you know, sir, all the five locations don't have five objects so far. These locations are not having any objects. And you know, this is what this is E of zero. Again, there will be indexing. This is E of zero, E1 of zero, otherwise, whatever the reference it is. This is E2 of zero, sorry, E2 of one. And this is uh, E2 of two. And this is uh, E2 of three. And this is E2 of four. This is what happens. And here, what we have created is, is not objects. Now, the statement here is not creating array of objects. Sir. It is creating array of references. If you look at this diagram, these are all references and all these references by default have what null here. This, we have null in each location. If you print that, uh, you know, that array, if you iterate it, you find nulls because employee is a, a class type, is a reference type. So by default, employee references hold nulls. It is set to null. Now what should we do? Now here, to each location, we should initialize a, to each location, we should initialize one object. For E of zero, we should assign one array object. For e of, e of one, uh, one minute, there is a slight correction here. What is it that I, I put it as E2? It should be E1 throughout that. Uh. Okay, you can, uh, I think you understand it, right? So nothing to worry. Might be I, I put this as just correct this to E2 otherwise. So that, all arrays are happening. Okay. So now, what we have created here is an array of references. And that's what happened at this line. Now, what should we do now? Now we should create we should create array object and initialize that to each location. For that, what we do now? Just loop it. You don't take any risk here, sir. Don't take any extra burden here. Just loop it and create objects and initialize each object to each location. How do you loop it, sir? You know, right? Whenever you create an array, I think I didn't, I didn't uh, teach you this yesterday. If you want to know the size of array dynamically, then what is that uh, on that array reference? What we can do is we can say e1 dot. You can see here, sir, length. This length returns length of the array. You see here. I think we didn't discuss this point yesterday. If you want to dynamically get the length of an array, sir, then we can do that by using this length attribute, which is available with the arrays, any array, sir, on all array types. We have this. Now, if you run this, what happens now? Nothing happens. We just get the length of array. Now I want to iterate it. I should iterate for how many times, sir? 
I should iterate for five times. When I iterate for five times, uh, what is that? I should initialize uh, array objects. I should create five objects and initialize the uh, value to each location. What it writes, sir? Then how do I do that now? It's so simple. We can use for loop here. For uh, so we can start with the uh, we have we have different ways, right? I arrow mark sorry. i arrow mark then uh, its array index starts with zero zero to e1 dot length it gives some value for us e1 dot length i am using for loop here if you wish you can take while loop also sir it's up to you this is not something difficult at all E1 dot length returns 5. This iterates from 0 to, I want it to iterate from 0 to 4 because 5 doesn't exist. Might be either we should use uh, uh, until or 2, no problem. If we, if we get an exception, I'll correct it. Nothing to worry. Now, here we should assign object to every location. What, what, it, what this loop does, it iterates for 5 times. When it iterates for five times, starting from zero, because array index starts with zero. So I am assuming uh, I should start from zero now. So E1 of I equal to new employee. Means so what this does, sir? This creates an employee object. Uh, why I'm seeing an error here? One. Value E1 of type. array does not take parameters one minute. Okay, I got it. This is array, right? You know, in uh, Scala, we have to, we cannot use uh, square brackets. We have to use parentheses. You remember, right? Yesterday also we have discussed this. That's the mistake, sir. Now this is the second step. Step one: Whenever you go for array of objects, first create array of references. That is step one. Step two: What is that you have to do in step two, sir? Create array of objects. Now you should create objects and assign that each object to one location. This is step two. I'm giving you clarity here. Now, when you do this, after once objects are created, what happens here now? Uh, how to increase the size? Any idea? I'm not that great with the uh, paint. I'll do one thing, I'll grab this. All right, okay, fine. Now you see, sir. So don't worry about this reference. Maybe if you want, you can change this to E2. That's not a big deal. Okay. Even here also, you can change it to E2. And E2, no issues. That's not a big issue for us. Now, when you look at it, what did I do in step two? I created five array objects. Every time loop it writes in the code, I created one uh, one employee object and I initialized to that uh, array reference. Means what did I do? I created five employee objects and uh, initialized to each reference of this array. Means what did I do now? It's something like this. This is a uh, employee object one, employee object two, employee object three, employee object four, employee object five. And here again, you know, right? In every object has a reference, has an address. See the beautiness here. Array itself is object. That is that address of that is holding by whom? I don't know why this came. Okay. One minute. So here, if you look at it, this itself is object. 
and this address is referred by q1 now again i created a array of objects employee objects now if you see here what is that i am doing in the in the loop here if this is we are creating object and initializing to array of references so now again each object has one address here this has something like 101 okay and this has 102 just understand the beautiness of programming this has 103 and this has 104 something like this you need to get this deeper understanding because when you are doing troubleshooting this is only going to save you sir. and in each object you have three variables again that is also there whenever you create object object has instance variables now every time what happens this has what in each object you have three instance variables employee name employee number employee id and salary now this 101 is initialized to assume that just assume this is initialized to e to offer zero okay so this is what initialized to this again now 102 is initialized by e to of 1. This is 103 is initialized by e to of 2. 104 is initialized by e to of 3. 105 is initialized by e to of 4, like this. Now, what is happening here again? These objects are referring by this array of references here. Got it right? Now, Again, this reference in the array is going to hold one, one employee object, like, like this, if you see. So this is pointing by this one, E2. And this is pointing by this one. Okay. And this is pointed by this one, like this, just an idea. Okay, this is what happens, sir. This is what happens, sir, when you create a second step, when you apply second step, it creates array uh, employee objects and initialize each employee object to one one array reference one employee reference okay now what do we have to do again it doesn't have data it ha now all these objects are filled with the default values they are set to default values now when you when you call setter method on each reference then we are going to input as per our convenience you got it right now what should you do now step three call set method How do you call it, sir? Something like same thing. You can copy and paste this stuff without any this thing. Okay, copy this, paste it. Let that uh, be there. Which one, sir? This one. And now here, remove this. And you only need to do one thing. You have to say dot set emp and here you have to pass you know right sir for each object you should pass different data means if you should pass different data for every object there are two different things either we should do that by by doing a dynamic initialization you can use that input function and, uh, and keep on inputting values you no know, you can use a scanner and create a scanner object and then try to input it from the keyboard and then pass different values for different objects that is one choice otherwise just for difference you know you can directly you can manage it with the looping also something like uh, i say that manohar plus i so i'm concatenating my this this gives you some difference here and also here emp id one zero zero one okay as it is integer then uh, what I am doing now, I can also add plus plus i to this because i is an integer there, it's not a string. And for salary also, I am just putting just to get different data for different objects. Uh, One thousand plus i. Okay. So what happens here? Every time we can pass different values to different data, or either you can input from keyboard. I, I will just talk about that scanner also. Not now. That we'll talk. We'll discuss in a separate session this is what how to input data this is step three so in step one we created array of references in step two we created a we we created a 
array, you know this employee objects and initialize to each array reference that employee reference which were part of array and step three i am again assigning data to each employee object in, you know by iterating loop you can see everywhere i am depending only on loop i am not using anything else and step four what is i i, I should do here step four just get the data from each object so the display the data from each object again you don't need to do anything simply copy this paste here because the iteration is same only thing is what we have to do we have to simply say you know all this you don't need it sir just say get em that's all you now run this program okay i am facing some issue means what simply i have to say until the, the correction here is just apply until i told you right i will check and update you. okay fine until and here also so that it will exclude that uh, last one because length is five it will try to iterate up to uh, five but but our index end with what it will end with just uh, which one said uh, four zero to four the index is from zero to four so you can simply say and here also until excludes the last value upper limit until is best best choice here sir okay now you run this this time i'm sure this won't fail you got it right can you see there sir and this is called array of objects this is how you 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 handle creating arrays with the no suppose if you have any class like this and if you want to create array of objects then we can do this following these steps here you should understand one thing many people think if, if we just create a, an array for an employee they think sir, array of objects are created here it's like you know creating just uh, suppose uh, you have a chocolate actually chocolate is object this one now here you are preparing chocolate covers here and you cannot take it granted chocolate cover for a chocolate after creating cover again you, you have to put chocolate in that that is what this is doing now got it right then after that uh, setting some other things we have once object is done created to that object again what you have to do to that chocolate you add some ingredients like uh, like you know like almonds or something like that assume that this is like that and finally step four you get the data from that you open it and get it out that's what you have to do so, so apply until here because as you know right the size of array is five the index starts with zero ends with four and you have to iterate up to zero to four if you put two it will take up to five if you put until it will just iterate until four one so that's the best fit for us okay anyhow this is idea about array of objects maybe we can do so much on this we can play a lot of ways okay now you can you know you have a lot of use cases you can play on this on this problem sir. suppose if i ask you a simple uh, requirement on this array of objects print all employees whose salary is greater than some suppose i just put it as thousand suppose i put thousand two thousand three thousand four thousand like that if i ask you print all employees details whose um, whose salary is greater than 2000 suppose greater than 2000 then what you have to do now you should know how to play with that arrays how to search into that arrays that's what you do in collection sir that's what you do in collection suppose you take list you take set you, you take map the data processing how you are going to do is you have so much of data in that you try to filter some that data and you have you try to apply something on that data like this which i am asking now in that uh, list you have all employee details now i am asking you display all employees whose salary is greater than sub 3000 or 2000 and what do you have to do you have to prepare a logic for that we'll discuss that okay we will we'll come to that point maybe we will do one or two use cases on that uh, to get familiar with how to you know do some uh, filtering on this kind of uh, collections okay this is this is simple and basic idea like you know the basic thing how to do this uh, uh, analysis on data what it right sir so is this clear for all of you sir you got an idea the difference between 
the yesterday's program and today's program you see that there is a lot of uh, variation here yesterday is very straightforward when you take it uh, when you discuss about array of integers or array of decimals or array of uh, strings like that but this one this is a totally different area where you create how you should have already an object existing class existing for that we create array of class, you know array for that we create objects for that array and then we set data and we then get data this is what this is all of you are good sir or anybody has any questions on this any questions sir yes or no sir please please ping me in the chat box your answers makes me much more comfortable okay what about others sir okay then please test this uh, program sir because please test it then i'll give one or two use cases that will be good for you so that you know while doing spark also you you understand the back back end process anybody can understand uh, what's happening when you look at it uh, the syntax all that but what's happening in the background that that thing if you understand then you become definitely an expert in that area because you all of you know that very well so what do you do sir please uh, test this example please test it then uh, i'll give some use cases we'll play with them interesting use cases definitely Okay, take it, sir, take it and please test it. I will update the time about Spark sessions uh, probably next week, sir, because we plan it from next Sunday right now, not this Sunday. So I will update it.
Is it done, sir? All of you are done? Completed? Okay, actually, we'll do one or two use cases, like it will be interesting. Suppose you know, right, you have salaries. Just now I put it as a thousand like that. Suppose I increment this by thousand. Okay. Not like this. Thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. Then what I want is uh, I just say something like uh, if I blue fit rates, what I need is. Uh, I'll do it. Just for my program, I'm just seeing X. So that is thousand. X equal X plus thousand. Every time I would like to increment by thousand. Okay. Now this has thousand, two thousand, three thousand, like that, four thousand, like that. So now requirement is uh, suppose you have each object has some salary so that you get an idea like how internally you, you understand how to get into that object and how to search for a value inside object okay how to search for a, a value inside object and get that from that object how to how to filter that value in the object and how to get it outside how to apply condition check on the object and get from it what it writes then. So you need to get this kind of, you know, programming tactics so that it will be much more useful for us when you are really playing in the real time use cases. So use case is this sir. same program, create you know, five employee objects. Sir. Now print all employee employees. Sir. Okay, all employees. Sir. Whose salary is greater than 2000? I'm just taking 2000 here, just an idea. Got it right? So, this is a simple use case. And like this, we can take so many use cases, like what you apply in uh, databases. We can apply even same thing on this because I told you every object is here is equal to one row in database. And suppose I have five rows. On that five rows, we can play with the, like you know, you write so many SQL questions, right? Similarly, SQL queries. Similarly, on this object, you can write so many logics on this. We can apply so many logics, like how you apply your queries. A similar kind of, you know, you can you can you can have simulate that here. Okay, employees greater than two thousand. Okay, max salary, mean salary, like how you do in the SQL databases. What is the maximum of all these five employees? What is the minimum of all these five employees? Then you, you, you understand like when you have these many objects in array, how you are going to compare this uh, one object information with another object? That is one thing you get. But it right, how you, you do the comparison between objects? That is also one more area you understand. But it right there. So these are the things what we need to master, sir, because all that basic things like, you know, just uh, uh, reversing an array, uh, searching an array, those are all basic things. Usually everybody has to learn that 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 algorithms. But in a real environment, these are much more useful for us. Okay. So that's an idea that we see tomorrow, sir, because already we are we are already running uh, what is that? 10 30, we are almost there. Tomorrow we work on this, and then after that, if possible, we'll do work on one or two programs on this and close this one dimensional array and switch to two dimensional. Got it right, sir? Understood?
Hope you, you, you understand this, right? It's a good topic, right? Got clarity here now? Okay, sir, we'll meet tomorrow. So from here, it will be interesting, sir. Our use cases, our collections, all this will be much more interesting. Anyhow, we are planning on weekends, this park. So parallel, we can also uh, see how actually big data. Again, we'll switch back to big data, I think. Thank you, sir.